So, and I'll just, I'll just share a little bit about myself. I already mentioned, um, I grew up here in the Philippines. I've lived here for 21 years. Uh, the past eight years I've been in Davao City and uh, doing peace and development work. So uh, before that I worked in the US. I, after I got a master's degree in conflict transformation, I worked for about seven years in community work in an urban poor community in the US. I lived in the community, uh, was sort of a typical what we call inner city uh, neighborhood. So gangs, drugs, shootings, etc. Um, uh, during that time, I worked in the school system, the public schools in the United States, and I worked on a program uh, called Restorative Justice. So we'll share a little bit more about that. But in the city of Denver, where I was working, uh, the, the school system decided to adopt this principle or this idea of restorative justice mm -hmm. in handling their students, and it turned out to be quite effective. So I was fortunate to be uh, part of that process within the school system. And so uh, I hope some of the things I learned there, and also even recently uh, in Mindanao over the past eight years, uh, can also be enlightening and enriching for our discussion. So um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, one of the unique things uh, that people don't usually think that they would associate with me is that I am also a former a uh, U.S. Marine, so I spent six years in the, as a soldier in the reserves. So that was part of my journey also of realizing that my calling was not to be a war maker, but to be a peacemaker. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's through a series of events. Now here I am, here we are together. So I, uh, you know, this is part of our journey and I hope that we can really be encouraging to one another. So I'd like, I'd like us all to, uh, start out by thinking about how do we respond to conflict, okay? What it, when we have, when there's conflict in our lives, what is our initial response? What is our initial feeling about conflict? So, and we're going to do that by, uh, we're going to imagine that there is a line going diagonal across this room, and it's sort of, but it will weave around the tables here, and we will imagine that um, where I'm standing over here is a conflict. And what you will do is put yourself on this imaginary line as to how would you respond to a conflict. If I'm the conflict, I'm the problem. Okay, say a problem at work. Would you, and you found out that there was this conflict happening. Would you want to get close to that conflict? Would you want to get involved? Or is your initial response or your initial feeling is uh, I'll get far away from this situation because uh, I don't, for whatever reason, okay? So let's, let's put this, so everyone will stand up and put yourself, or maybe you're somewhere in between, okay? Put yourself on this imaginary line from between me and where Edna was just sitting. Um, she would be the person far away from the conflict and I am the conflict. So let's stand up and put yourself on this line where you would find yourself in relation to a conflict that you just discovered in your workplace. So that's, imagine in your, in your mind, where would I put myself? Okay, and I'm gonna, the conflict is still here, but I'm gonna move around. So just stay, imagine this line goes this way. <laughs> so we have some people who are a bit far, some people who are very close, and some people who are in the middle. Okay, so who wants to share why did you put yourself in that spot? Okay, and I'm gonna take some notes as you share with me. I'm gonna to try to pull out some reasons why people put themselves in relation to conflict. Who would like to share? Why did you put yourself in that spot? So now, we're going to move a little bit, move to a different location if that conflict occurred with your spouse, your parent, your child, someone in your family. Would you find yourself reacting differently? Because this was first a work conflict. If this was a family conflict, would you react differently to that conflict? Maybe you would, maybe, you're, maybe not. 
So if you would move, if you would, then move to a different location about that. Okay, so people are moving closer and closer. Maybe a little bit. Okay. Why? What changes? Why is why, why the movement closer? But no one moved away. Sometimes the family conflicts are the worst. The most ma'ini. Okay, now. Now, if this conflict has been going on for a long time, what, where would you be? Okay, so move. Now, okay, some people still get even closer. Some people are moving further away. Okay, what, now why are we moving in different directions here? So, and I'll just, I'll just share a little bit about myself. I already mentioned, um, I grew up here in the Philippines. I've lived here for 21 years. Uh, the past eight years I've been in Davao City and uh, doing peace and development work. So uh, before that, I worked in the US. I, after I got a master's degree in conflict transformation, I worked for about seven years in community work in an urban poor community in the US. I lived in the community. Uh, it was sort of a typical, what we call inner city uh, neighborhood. So gangs, drugs, shootings, etc. So if we could, if you all could help me, you will be my assistants. If this is, if one of these is green, can you just get some tape and put it under the green uh, column over there? And if it's yellow, then someone, I'll just let people distribute these. You can put them on the yellow or the orange. And then the rest of us, there's already tape on the wall, so it's faster. We can go back to our seats. So I call this the good, the bad, and the ugly, but it's not ugly. It's I change it to scary. Conflict and conflict energy. So one of the things we can learn from this is that as we are, sometimes we don't have a choice. Sometimes conflict comes to us, whether we like it or not. And so then we just have to get involved. But we can have initial reactions, and oftentimes that is in part due to what is the energy that's happening. And that is, relates to a number of things. It can relate to the type of conflict, if it's work, if it's home, if it's... It can also relate to where we are in that conflict. Is this the beginning? It's what see, looks like the beginning of the conflict? Or is it near the end? And so we can say, some of this is, this brings out some good responses. Maybe these brings out some scary responses or that scary energy or that bad energy. Actually, these ones here are not necessarily bad responses, okay? But these are in response to the perception that there is something negative that could happen. So I want closure, because see, it's been so long, or we just need, I need some distance to process it. So as we respond to the energy Debug conflict not only is, involves energy, it actually generates more energy. Or sometimes it sucks out the energy from you. And then you're really tired. So you want the closure. You don't like this. Maybe I am the conflict. Or maybe I'm the one who's the problem here. So, but, or maybe I just need some distance. And it's a little scary, so I want to study it first. And I'm, it, it might be, I might have to get involved because otherwise, I might be directly, if right, directly affected, or I'm not the right person to resolve. So we, have, we even have mixed feelings as we look at conflict. But we also can say that there's, is there some potential for good in this conflict? Could the energy turn into something good? And one of the theories or the ideas of conflict transformation is that conflict is not necessarily bad. Oftentimes we have an assumption that if there is conflict, that's bad. But one of the ideas of conflict transformation is that there might be something good that can come out of conflict. And so part of, that's why we, we, we don't jump into like a communication skills activity. We'll do that in the afternoon. But we want to really look at 
How do we even approach this? Are we too afraid of what, the, what we see as the bad energy in this or the scary energy in this that we won't even get involved? Or we might get involved in the wrong way. Okay? So some of the things we say, ah, oh, but we can intervene. I actually have a job to do here. I can, I, but I need to understand it first. And I'm in the position, so I, I have to deal with this. And it's an opportunity to even help others. So we need to face it head on. And to do it, sometimes it's really not, to, not, to not engage with it is not even an option. So we, what we want to start thinking about is conflict involves many different things. It involves understanding where we are in the conflict. Also understanding what is the energy? How is the energy of this situation affecting me? Sometimes it energizes us in a bad way. Because then we go talk to them, oh, I'm so mad. Did you see what he did? Oh my goodness, I'm so mad at him. You know, so I have more energy, but that's not necessarily good energy. So how do we use that energy? Do we suppress it? Do we push it down? Do we express it in a bad way? Or do we find a way to express it so that it can become constructive? It can be something helpful. Maybe there's really an issue here that needs to be dealt with that no one's talking about. So we just cover it over, okay? So I've been involved in situations where you don't want to talk about this, but a person in leadership is involved in sexual abuse of minors, okay? This is a very common issue. And people, someone left a few weeks ago, a ministry leader said, what do you do with this situation? There is this, you know, missionary and his trusted associate, trusted associate, after many years, they started a church, a school, whatever, and that associate suddenly was discovered, the missionary found out, was involved in inappropriate relationship with students. When the missionary tried to bring it up, after, you know, they, part of this community, the people, what happened? They split, and who was on the outside? Even though, even though the associate, the, the Filipino, was the one in this case, in the wrong, but everyone sided with him. And the missionary, who was trying to do the right thing, and trying to address it pro proactively, was suddenly the bad guy, okay? So th this is not to say that, you know, nothing about missionaries are good. You know, it, it can be the other way around also. But all that to say is sometimes we need to find ways to address conflict because something might be going on that needs to be addressed because if it's not and we let it go on, it will just become worse and worse. So then we want to ask ourselves, okay, how do we deal with this kind of issue?